What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. Uh, today guys, we're gonna be setting up the pump jack, which is something you may or may not have heard of related to Immersive Engineering before, but that is because it's not actually part of the core Immersive Engineering mod, it's part of one of the add-ons called Immersive Petroleum. And you may have seen people mentioning that in the comments. A lot of people, a lot of people, have been telling me that I should add it in and play around with it. And I do wanna say that it has been added in this entire time. Ever since episode one, it's been included in the mod list in the description and I know some people have also noted that but we were just waiting to get a little bit further into the series before we started messing around with it and now I feel like we have a suitable amount of resources to actually do this justice so we're gonna start messing around with it today hopefully do it for at least a few episodes because there is a lot of interesting stuff and very useful stuff that is included in this that functions pretty much seamlessly with the rest of immersive engineering so the main premise of Immersive Petroleum, go figure, is to get oil from the world. And essentially everything in it is based around harvesting oil, processing it, or utilizing it. So the pump jack is going to be where that whole process starts. It's gonna work very similar to the excavator, but it's gonna be getting fluid instead of getting ore. So what we're gonna do is use the core sample drill, go into different chunks, and we're going to determine if that chunk came with a fluid reservoir. Now the fluid reservoir could be water, it could be lava, or it could be crude oil. We don't really care about the water or lava, we want it to be crude oil, and do not worry, I have already found one very close by so that we don't have to run around a ton, but it shouldn't be very hard to find, and of course that does mean it is a finite resource, but you will have plenty of it in your world around your base, do not worry, they are not super difficult to find. And it was actually more annoying when I was trying to find stuff for the excavator because I found so much crude oil around here. But the pump jack is going to allow us to extract that using a decent amount of power input. And then we can just pump it into what we're gonna to do today, which will be a tank. And then we will be able to use it later in stuff like a distillation column to separate it into diesel, which of course we can use for more power, gasoline, uh, things to make asphalt, all that sort of stuff. So I'm not gonna to get too far into that, but if we look at my inventory right now, I have all of the stuff that we are going to need to set this up today. And then a little bit extra in terms of fluid pipes and whatnot, because we are going to be moving some liquid around. So not all of that is necessary for setting it up, but it would be nice to have a few extra. I may actually need a couple more but we have the core sample drill. We have a high voltage capacitor because right now we are not going to be wiring power out here. I do need to transition everything in the base over and connect it to our high voltage setup with the diesel generator. Um, but I didn't wanna just make this super scuffed setup to bring power out the front here. So we do have everything uh, powered by ca um, capacitors today. We have the medium voltage capacitor used for the core sample drill, just like last time. We've got the um, projector, which we're going to turn from the alloy kiln one into the pump jack one to make it easier to set up because it is relatively big. And then just the generic blocks, the sheet metal, the blocks of steel and scaffolding. It does take a bit of steel, but it only takes two heavy engineering blocks, two light engineering blocks, and then all of this iron sheet metal and uh, half the treated wood fence is going to be used for making the tank. And then the rest of the treated wood fence is going to be used for making the pump jack itself. So it is becoming nighttime. So I think we are going to sleep before we get into anything else. You can also see that I've started trying to reorganize the base a little bit out here since we are going to start building stuff out here and I will be moving a lot of this stuff or trying to make it look a bit nicer. But if we pull out the core sample drill, like I said, this is where you will start. And you can see we are in a chunk right here. So if we throw this down, and I believe the capacitor down right there and then get it going. I believe this is the one that has about 15 million millibuckets of uh, crude oil in it. So you do get to see the exact amount, just like the ore. If we click that, we get our core sample. It is black. It's got no minerals and it's got, okay, 12.5 million millibuckets of crude oil. So this is exactly where we want to go. So if we build the pump jack anywhere in here, it will be able to harvest all of that crude oil at a rate of about 15 millibuckets per tick. And the interesting thing is that if you add more pump jacks, it gets it at a faster rate. I don't know if that's linear or if it's got sort of a, um, what do you call it? Diminishing return uh, based on how many you have in here. Uh, I don't see any reason to have any more for the time being because this is just gonna supplement our diesel usage. Uh, but if you end up getting this whole area dry and get all the millibuckets of crude oil out, you can continue running one pump jack and it will get you six millibuckets per tick of crude oil. Having more will not make you get more, but you will still be able to pull out six millibuckets per tick uh, if you power it. But obviously if you go and find more crude oil, it'd be better to use your power there because it's gonna net you much more. 
Um, but if you have one set up perfectly in your base, you can continue using that. So we know that this chunk is good, so we can get these bad boys back here. And what we wanna do now is open up the engineer's manual. And if we go back to the beginning, you can see that we have uh, oil processing. And if we click this, we've got the projector. So I guess we did come in here before a little bit, but we've got um, this to discuss fluid reservoirs, which is basically what I went over, the aquifer, the oil, oil reservoir, and the magma chamber. So the three different types of fluids you can get. And the first thing then is the pump jack. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, once we end up looking at it, it's got awesome, awesome animations on it. And it's a multi plug that extracts crude oil from deposits underneath bedrock. And if we go over, it uses 1,024 flux per tick to net 15 millibuckets per tick. Uh, and it is automatically ejected through the side ports with orange dots on them. So we can put it right into our tank. And the average oil deposit will take 11 days to deplete. So adding more pump jacks can speed it up. But once it is depleted, you can continue using it at a decreased rate. So we're just gonna use one pump jack for now and we're gonna put it right here. But uh, actually, did I keep this open to pump jacks? So we'll open it there. We will throw this along with the projector in here to get the pump jack projector. And let me see if I remember how to use this. So we shift right click on it. And I think we want it right, where do we want to put it? Maybe right here? I don't actually know. I think maybe right here. No, over more. We want to keep it right here. I think that's good. So we'll do that uh, because we can clear more of this out, but I want to keep it away from the main pathway and leave enough room for us to put the tank that we can actually put this into, which will hold 512 buckets, which is exactly what we want because we're going to be getting a lot of this and not using it right away. So now it's time to pull out a bunch of these different blocks that we're going to be using and might as well just get all of them that we could potentially use out here. We just got to make sure we keep the projector out here too. Okay, so now we can start building away here. And this makes it so much easier. I should have done this a long time ago. If I could actually click things properly. See, I soiled it because, oh, well, I guess if we used all that. I was going to say, we have just enough room for all the blocks out here. And I misplaced one. Okay, so then we got to fill in these. Next layer, we get our treated wood fences. Another light engineering block. Redstone heavy engineering block. Next layer, we get the heavy one. Stack these up one more. They do have a little bit of like a, almost like a visual bug. Do I have any extra blocks on me? I'm going to use iron sheet metal because I can. And then we got to get rid of that. And then up at the top, another block of steel. Thankfully, not that much steel. Um, the steel sheet metal takes a little bit too, but nothing too bad. And wow, this makes it so much easier making these builds. Okay, there we go. We are done. And then I think we click the middle heavy engineering block. There we go. So then we come down here and... Shift right click to get rid of it. And we have it. So awesome. We are able to pump out the crude oil from either there or there. So either side. And we are able to input power right there. So what we're going to do is throw the high voltage capacitor on there once we make the tank. And to make the tank, we can open up our engineer's manual. I don't think I'm going to use the projector for this because it should be really simple. Um, but if we go to, is it construction? Yeah, construction and then tank. It's a multi-block that provides space for large amounts of fluid. 512 buckets of any fluid, um, which can be piped through the top or bottom block. And it can only be extracted from the bottom. So I guess you can input it from the bottom. I find that very weird. I feel like it should just be through the top, but it says we can pipe it in through the bottom. Uh, so we're going to give that a go. But I'm trying to think of where we want to make this because it's going to be a three by three, which makes it not great for being over there. I might actually put it right over here, kind of in the way of the path like this, because then we can wrap the path sort of around and have like a setup right here and kind of curve the path over here to go towards the mine, even though we don't use it anymore. Um, but I think that'll be interesting. So we go one, two, three, and then the fourth layer is the top. So we got one at the bottom 
And then we're gonna have to go up three here and just go all the way around. So that's one, two, three, and then do the top here. And then I wonder what we click on. Does it say um, proportional? I assume it's something lower on here. There we go. Okay. So now the real question is, was this thing lying when it said we could pump it in the bottom? Or was I misreading it or what? Because I feel like you need some form of kind of high pressure here to, to be able to fill this thing up once it starts to get more filled. So I feel like the top would make the most sense. Either one is fine, but if we're able to put it in the bottom, I don't see why we wouldn't. And then we can put the distillation column over here sometime later with this as a buffer. But what we can do now is put the power in because it actually should be able to run. So we have the option of putting the high voltage, high voltage capacitor basically right on there. I think we do want to take a look real quick. If we pop it down, if I just pop it here, are we able to do anything on the bottom? I think is orange output. Yeah. So if we do that and then we throw it down over here, it should start powering it, I think. Oh, there we go. So it starts running. Now we can watch how quickly the power goes down on this. Um, it is going to be pretty fast. This does have an internal buffer, as you can see. Um, so once that's filled, it should go down a bit slower. But it is going to constantly have to be replaced over here uh, with power until we get power run out here. I plan on doing that pretty much once I'm off camera. This is one of the things that I do have to do is make everything look a little bit nicer. I want to make this doorway a bit bigger, stuff like that and then convert a lot of this power over. But if we look in here now, I don't really know how you take a look at the contents of this. That's the only problem. How do you <laughs> how do you see how much liquid is in the tank? I mean, if this thing's still able to run and it's able to put the fluid somewhere, it has to be in here. I think that is showing how full it is. You can see the one line right there because it's animated. It just does a really poor job of showing it because this whole thing is gray when it's not filled and we're pumping oil in there, which is also gray. So you can see right there, it's like one line of pixels that's moving. Uh, it shows that we have oil in there. So if it keeps going, um, it should be able to continue collecting it. But I don't know. It's going to take a really long time if it's 15 millibuckets per tick and this thing holds 512 buckets. That's going to be a little bit before it gets to, I would say that's maybe what, 1 one twentieth, maybe 5% filled, and it probably rounds up. So before we get the second line, it's going to be a little bit. But I think this thing looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's got such smooth animations, and it, it truly looks like what a pump jack would look like in, in real life. So I think it's awesome. And the entire concept of this is, is great. And the next episode, we're going to be working on making the, uh, where is it? The distillation tower, which again, also, I mean, this thing looks absolutely phenomenal. Look at how much steel it requires, though. You got a ton of steel scaffolding and then a ton of iron sheet metal. This thing is monstrous. So we're going to be building this thing uh, environmentally unfriendly. And so we're going to work on that. Um, if you want to wait for that, obviously you can go about it on your own, but this is what's going to net us diesel lubricant and gasoline, um, and then bitumen or however you would pronounce it. Uh, it looks like we've now hit the second line. So you can see there, uh, it looks like we got a little bit more in there. So it is going strong and this is going to be probably almost out of power. So, uh, I think we're going to call it there for the day guys. I know it was a pretty quick episode. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all had an awesome Thanksgiving holiday or are, are excited for Christmas coming up. Uh, I did want to let you guys know that hopefully the video quality will be improving even further because after seven years of routinely upgrading one or two parts on my computer per year, uh, I decided to give my computer, which is actually pretty good still, um, so we won't see a huge jump in quality, um, but I'm giving my computer to my fiance, who's only ever had a laptop before, so that she can play some games with me. And then I am going to be getting a new computer. I already have it ordered that will hopefully allow for not only very high quality video production, but with the internet that I have at my new apartment, uh, very good video streaming. So uh, let me know if you guys would like to see me finally use my Twitch account. I know some of you guys follow it. I've used it a couple times, like four or five years ago before I went to college. 
Um, but I've been tempted to get back into it for when I'm prepping for videos and stuff to keep people updated. Uh, but let me know if you'd be excited to see that. And if you are excited to jump into immersive petroleum with me, because I have never messed around with this before. So it's pretty new stuff to me and pretty darn cool, mainly because I, you know, got a degree in chemical engineering and I took a bunch of fuel processing classes. So this is exactly what I learned. Um, so it's, you know, it's actually pretty funny to me that I get to work with this now because I actually kind of understand it. So it's definitely really awesome stuff. And they've done a phenomenal job of, of trying to replicate more real world stuff with it and what it separates into and the distillation tower with, you know, in real life, you would use something like that with like, it's called catalytic cracking, which allows you to separate the bonds to get it into different qualities of, um, sort of like gasoline that you would use, but I won't get too far into that. I know it's going to bore you guys. We're already at the end of the video and I'm rambling, but I hope you guys had an awesome Thanksgiving if you celebrate that. And uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to you later. Upside down